Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it and pick up some of the new Commander Legend cards, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right in their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So for today's deck tech, I am actually really excited about this one. This is one of the commanders I've been the most excited about probably in the past couple of sets, and it is another blue black commander i feels like i just did one the last time i did a deck tech and it's going to be on aromi of the dead tide so this is just an uncommon legendary creature in commander legends that i really feel like outshines a lot of the other rare or even mythic legendary creatures in this set and i feel like this is probably one of the most broken commanders in the set so if you're not familiar with it i'll read it for you it has a super cool ability you tap it and exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have and then target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until the end of turn. The creature's Encore cost is equal to the mana cost. So to Encore a card, you exile that creature and pay its mana cost, and for each opponent, you create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. And then you sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step, and you can only do this as a sorcery. So there are a lot of things going on in this text box. Encore is a brand new mechanic that is in Commander Legends, and if you pay attention to all the other Encore cards, usually the Encore ability of the creature is a lot more mana than its mana cost, because you're getting essentially three copies of the card, so it usually is a lot more mana. So the fact that Aromi lets us Encore the creatures just for their mana cost, I think is super powerful. Another thing that is really cool about Encore is you sacrifice those creatures at the end of turn, unlike the Unearth ability where you have to exile it or the creature is exiled if it were to leave the battlefield for any reason. This is relevant because this will trigger death triggers and we can also sacrifice them and get value. There's just a lot of really cool things about this commander. So there are a couple of different approaches that I've seen with Aromi so far. There are people that are definitely brewing this to be a little bit more competitive. They're focusing on maybe only using the ability once or twice to win the game with some type of combo. And don't get me wrong, I really like that. In fact, that's probably how I'm going to personally build it. But for this deck tech, we are a little bit more focused on getting value out of Hiromi and using it a lot, but we do have a combo in here to end the game if it gets to that point. So let's start off with the ramp. We're not super heavy on it. Our commander is fairly cheap. I do imagine that it will be removed, but we've got ways of making a lot of mana with some of these abilities. So we're playing Arcane Signet, Charcoal Diamond, Demir Signet, Felwar Stone, Sky Diamond, Soul Ring, and Wayfarer's Bauble. Just your average two mana or less ramp spells can help us get our commander out super quickly. That's where we kind of want to be. We've also got some other ways of making a ridiculous amount of mana with our commander's ability. Cards like Cloud out of fairies, which when it comes into play, we get to untap two lands. But if we encore it, we get to untap six lands, which can make us a lot of mana. Along that same vein, we have Peregrine Drake, which when it enters the battlefield, we get to untap up to five lands. A little bit more mana, but we get to untap five lands, which can give us a lot of mana to use to play some of our bigger spells. And then we have kind of a lesser known creature that I think is really good in the deck. That's Priest of Gix. When it enters the battlefield, we get to add three mana to our mana pool. This is a super useful card and can give us a lot of mana that we need for a really explosive turn. So two of the really important aspects of this deck is first we want to make sure that we have plenty of cards in our graveyard so we can actually activate Aromi because if we're planning on activating this ability every single turn we need to make sure that, that we're at least putting more than three cards in our graveyard because usually we're going to have to exile three because of because. <laughs> so we've got a couple of different ways of filling our graveyard. We've got ways of tutoring for very specific cards and putting them into our graveyard and then just overall mill effects and then we've got some wheels too. So let's go over just the full on mill cards. So we've got Sage's Rogue Denizen, which whenever a blue creature enters the battlefield under our control, target player puts the top two cards of their library into our graveyard. Most of the time we're gonna wanna choose ourselves with this. We wanna make sure our graveyard's nice and full and we are playing a ton of blue creatures. We then have Stinkweed Imp, which is a pretty much useless creature outside of being just a dredger. I mean, it might have some utility as a blocker, but dredge five is a lot for just a three mana creature. So if we were to draw a card with Stinkweed Imp in our graveyard, instead we'd take five cards from our library, put them into our graveyard and we put Stinkweed Imp into our hand. So if we can find ways of continually getting Stinkweed Imp back into our graveyard, that will mill us a ton of cards throughout the game. We then have some really powerful looters and wheel effects like Looter Ill Core and Merfolk Looter, which each can let us tap to draw a card and discard a card, which is really good for helping us get the really expensive creatures from our hand into our graveyard so we can abuse them with our commander. Obsessive Stitcher is the same thing. We can draw a card and discard a card, but it can also be used to reanimate a big creature in our graveyard. 
We then have Jace's Archivist, which is Windfall on a creature. Each player is going to discard their hand and then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. We then have Tonebound Lich, which I think is a super cool creature. When it enters a battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, we can draw a card and then discard a card. It also has Death Touch and Lifelink, so it has a ton of utility. And this is a card that we are going to be very happy to chump with, maybe taking out a bigger creature. Once it's in our graveyard, we can bring it back with our commander, draw three cards, discard three cards, and hopefully gain some more life. So that's a really useful card. We then have two more wheel effect with ancient excavation and windfall although ancient excavation is just a wheel really for us where windfall is a wheel for everybody we then have careful study which for one blue mana lets us draw two cards and discard two cards we're not playing a whole ton of cantrips just because we've got a lot of draw power just in our creatures so this is just a nice useful card to help fill our graveyard in addition to careful study we're also playing thought scour which is another one mana cantrip target player mills two cards and then we get to draw a card more often than not we're going to want to be targeting ourselves with that we're then playing frantic search and forbidden alchemy um frantic search lets us draw two cards we discard two cards and we get to untap three lands and forbidden alchemy lets us look at the top four cards of our library one goes into our hand and the rest goes into our graveyard has some added utility of being able to be flashbacked for six in a black which is really good and then we've got some ways like i said to put very specific creatures in our graveyard so we've got buried alive which lets us put three creatures into our graveyard we then have corpse connoisseur which when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for a creature and put it directly into our graveyard it also has unearthed for three and a black so we can unearth it bring it back from the graveyard and then it will find another creature to put into our graveyard or we can use our commander and bring it back and get three creatures into our graveyard which is super useful now there are two other cards that we have in our deck that will let us uh mill a lot the first is altar of dementia which lets us sacrifice a creature and target player is going to mill cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power more often than that we're going to be targeting ourselves with that but using it on our opponents is useful too and then we have mesmeric orb which is actually part of our combo so i'll go into that card a little bit later so before I get into our really spicy enter the battlefield triggers, because that's kind of how I've, I've built this deck around really taking advantage of enter the battlefield triggers, I thought I'd just quickly go over the interaction that we have in the deck um, that aren't creatures, ways we have of stopping our opponents or keeping our opponents from interacting with us. So we've got counter squall, which can counter any non-creature spell and its controller will lose two life. We then have Dispel, which can counter any instant, which is super useful when we're trying to combo off, because if an opponent is going to do something during our turn, more than likely it's going to be an instant, so Dispel will catch that, and for being only one blue mana, super useful. We then have Drown in the Lock. We can either counter target spell, convert a mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard, or destroy target creature with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. So this is super flexible. It can either be a kill spell or a counter spell, so we really like to see that. We then have Muddle the Mixture, which can counter any instant or sorcery spell and then we can transmute it for one blue blue so we can discard it search our library for a card that costs two and put it into our hand just so happens that our main combo piece costs two mana so that is super useful and there are a lot of other really good cards at two cmc that we really would like to have depending on the situation and then we have three spot removal with pongify rapid hybridization and reality shift Okay, so let's get into the enter the battlefield creatures that are really going to benefit us. So let's start off with Floating Dream Zubera. This is a super cool card. I saw somebody actually talk about this on MTG Goldfish, and I thought that it was a, a super cool include. When Floating Dream Zubera is put into a graveyard from play, draw a card for each Zubera put into a graveyard from play this turn. So when we encore this with our commander and we put all three of them into the graveyard, all three of them are going to trigger, giving us three triggers each. So for two mana, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards. We then have Impaler strike which when it deals combat damage to a player we have to sacrifice it and if we do we get to draw three cards it has flying this is a super cool card we can play it on turn four swing with it sacrifice it draw three cards it's in our graveyard we can encore it with our commander and draw nine cards so this is this is a super cool card i'm just like really excited about all these like little interactions of basically tripling what a creature can do i think it's kind of nuts we then have tribute mage which is super powerful in this deck when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for an artifact card with two converted mana cost reveal it and put it into our hand and we shuffle our library so this can find our mesmeric orb this can find our altar of dementia this can find a mana rock if we need it there are so many things that this thing can snag and being able to get three of them is super cool we then have solemn simulacrum which when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for a basic land card put it into the play tapped shuffle our library when it dies we get to draw a card so again super cool sequencing with this deck we play the creature get the value 
value out of it. You know, use it as a blocker, sacrifice it to an altar of dementia, use it for attacking. And then when it dies, we can bring it back with our commander and get triple the value out of it. This, seriously, this deck looks like so much fun. We then have Fairy Miscreant, which usually is pretty useless in a singleton format. When it enters a battlefield, if we control another creature named Fairy Miscreant, we get to draw a card. So obviously it's not gonna do anything the turn we cast it, but if we reanimate it from the graveyard with our commander, we're gonna be drawing a ton of cards. And then finally we have Watcher for Tomorrow. This is kind of a pet card of mine. I love wizard tribal decks. I, I like wizards just in general. So this is a pretty good include for the deck. When it enters a battlefield, it enters tapped and we hide away. So we get to look at the top four cards of our library and exile one of them underneath the Watcher for Tomorrow and the rest go on the bottom of our library. And then when it leaves the battlefield, we get to put that exile card into its owner's hand. So again, this is really good the turn it comes out. And also this is really good to encore from the graveyard. This will get us four cards throughout the game. Okay, so now that we've gone over the enter the battlefield trigger creatures that are super good for us, let's go over the ones that are really going to hurt our opponents and maybe even get us the game. So first off, we have Cavalier of Night, which when it enters the battlefield, we get to sacrifice a creature. And if we do, we get to destroy a target creature and opponent controls. And when Cavalier of Night dies, we get to return target creature card with converted mana cost three or less from our graveyard directly to the battlefield. So again, this is another one of those cards that is really good when we cast it, and then even better when we get to encore it. We then have Massacre Worm, which is really kind of an alternate win condition. That this could really end games. When it enters the battlefield, the creatures our opponents control get minus two, minus two until the end of turn and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. So with this being encored, all of our opponent's creatures are gonna be getting minus six, minus six. And then whenever their creatures die, they're gonna be taking six damage for each of those creatures, which is absolutely brutal. We then have Merciless Executioner and Plague Crafter. There are two other cards that have the same effect. I didn't put them in here, but if you want to have more of these effects, go ahead and, and put them in, to, you know, take out, you know, two cards that you don't like. But when they enter the battlefield, each player has to sacrifice a creature. So these are super powerful because when they enter the battlefield, more than likely we're going to be sacrificing them to their own enter the battlefield trigger. So they'll be in our graveyard. Our opponents are going to have to sacrifice maybe a commander if we get these down early enough or maybe a, a value piece. And then once we encore them, sweeping away three creatures from each of our opponents is going to be backbreaking for them. We then have reform, which I think is a really good example of a really broken card in this deck. When reform dies, we put a 3-3 blue fish creature token onto the battlefield with when this creature dies put a 6-6 six, six blue whale creature token onto the battlefield with when this creature dies put a 9-9 nine, nine blue kraken creature token onto the battlefield so when we encore this this is going to just give us so many tokens throughout the game three reforms is going to get out of control call some type of exterminator if you've got reforms you're going to die we then have sepulchral primordial which is a very expensive card mana wise um that's why i've got a ton of ramp because it's going to be expensive to encore this but when it enters a battlefield for each opponent we may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under our control so when we encore sepulchral primordial we're going to be getting three creatures from each opponent's graveyard so hopefully our opponents have that many creatures in their graveyard and this will probably steal us the game we then have vindictive lich which when it dies we have to choose one or more and each mode must target a different player so target opponent sacrifices a creature target opponent discards two cards and target opponent loses five life so basically when we encore this somebody's going to be losing 15 somebody's going to be discarding six cards and somebody's going to be sacrificing three creatures if we decide to split it up that way which is absolutely brutal. Yarrick's Fen Lurker, which when it enters the battlefield, each opponent exiles a card from their hand. So encoring this is going to strip away three cards from each of our opponent's hands. And the fact that they're being exiled is not trivial. That is going to be absolutely brutal for our opponents. And finally, we have Burglar Rat, which is kind of another copy of Yarrick's Fen Lurker, not quite as good. When it, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. So sometimes I can kind of play into our opponent's strategy if they're a graveyard deck, but more often than not, it's not really going to matter too much that it's just discarding. All right, so before I get into the combo, because it wouldn't be a land in deck type without a combo, I'm going to be going over just the extra, just like some extra synergy cards. These cards didn't really fit into uh, any of my categories. So we've got body double. It can enter the battlefield as any copy of any creature in a graveyard. So that can be really useful to encore and get three copies of, you know, any creature in a graveyard. And then we've got Teferi's Veil, which I haven't decided if it's just 
the one of the better cards in the deck that we always want to see but whenever any creature you control attacks it phases out at the end of combat so why this is useful is our creatures will phase out after they attack which means they will get around that sacrifice at the end of turn clause at the encore so we get to keep those creatures those creature tokens that we've encored like i said i'm not sure if it's the best thing because we kind of want some of these things to die and then we have victimize this is just a reanimation spell it's the only one i've put in the deck but it's so efficient that i really feel like it deserves a slot we get to choose two target creatures in our graveyard we sacrifice a creature and if we do we return the chosen cards to the battlefield tap so this is just an extra way of maybe getting around some of the really expensive casting costs of some of the spells and when we bring them back into play we can sacrifice them again and take advantage of them with our commander later in the game so i feel like it's really worth playing in this deck one more super powerful synergistic card in the deck it's a little bit expensive but i think it's super worth playing in this deck is panharmonicon it's kind of a busted artifact that says if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time so not only is this going to give us a ton of value out of the many different enter the battlefield triggers that we have on our creatures it's going to get triple good when we encore them from our graveyard with our commander which honestly if we can resolve a panharmonicon and then use our commander to maybe three times that'll probably be we'll have gained so much advantage at that point that it'll be very difficult for our opponents to come back from that so panharmonicon i think is worth that 10 to 14 dollar price range depending on where you get the card from so okay so let's go over the combo that i have in the deck now this isn't like the strongest combo of all time there's plenty of ways to interact with it to uh, stop it from happening so what we need for this combo to set up is we need to have our commander in play without summoning sicknix and mesmeric orb whenever a permanent is untapped its controller will mill a card and then we need to have fate stitcher in our graveyard so we activate our commander and we encore the fate stitcher which will give us three copies of it we can tap one of the fate stitchers to tap or untap any one permanent it doesn't really matter that will trigger the mesmeric orb making us mill a card and we can use one of the two untapped fate stitchers to untap the fate stitcher that we just untapped milling us another card and we can just repeat this until our entire library is milled out so with our entire library in our graveyard it's very easy to see where this is going we will activate dread return which has a flashback cost of sacrificing three creatures but we just so happen to have three from the encore from our commander so we flashback dread return sacrificing our three fate stitchers to reanimate a creature card from our graveyard directly to the battlefield and it's going to be Thassa's oracle so when that enters the battlefield we'll just win the game so like i said it's not the strongest combo but it's also not the weakest if you're going to be playing this with your friends or at your local game store if wherever you're at in the world is still allowing that just let everybody know that your deck can pull off a combo fairly quickly because it's really easy to set this combo up with this deck so it's fairly potent there are ways of interacting with the deck if your opponent's are prepared for it but it's not really nice to um, surprise your opponents with a deck like this because maybe if they would have known that you were going to play a deck this strong they would have played a different deck so just kind of have that conversation with them also it should be noted that this combo will also work with vizier of tumbling sand which is also in the deck basically does the same thing except it has a cycling ability but that's not super relevant so uh, one really cool part about this combo is it's really easy to set up with final parting which is a sorcery that lets us search our library for two cards one goes into our hand the other goes into our graveyard so kind of works pretty perfectly we can find fate stitcher put it in our graveyard and put mesmeric orb into our hand set up the combo super quickly so again this like i said this combo is pretty easy to set up we don't need a ton of mana don't need that much setup so like i said just make sure your play group is aware of what you're going to be doing so that is all of the non-land cards and most of my decks i don't go into too much detail with the lands but um the mana base i've actually carefully chosen a little bit more because I wanted a lot of sacrifice lands because we need to have at least three cards in our graveyard to activate our commander so getting extra lands into our graveyard would be really useful so we've got ash barons with basic land cycling we can discard it search our library for a basic land put it into our hand we then have evolving wilds and terramorphic expanse basically the same card functionally sacrifice them search our library for a basic put it into play tapped we have myriad landscape which we can pay to and sacrifice it to search our library for up to two basic lands that share type put it into play super useful for filling our graveyard with just extra lands that we can exile away to arami we then have nathalia drownyard which has an activated ability for one a blue and a black we can tap it to make target player mill three cards from their library into their graveyard which is perfect for us to set up the cost for activating our commander's ability 
And with that, this deck tech is coming to a close. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We really appreciate your guys' support. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much to our subscribers and our patrons. You guys mean a lot to us. Let me know down in the comment section below if there are any cards that you would have put in this deck that maybe I forgot or maybe some of your favorite cards that you saw in this deck. I think that this deck is super cool. I don't regularly build decks that I do deck techs on just because I would have to be spending a lot of money and building a lot of decks. But I think this is one that I'm going to build and probably keep for a long time. And I'm probably going to be playing it on one of the future Duel of the Peaks. So stay tuned for that. Just a quick reminder, if you are interested in supporting us directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash commandvalley. It supports us directly. Like I said, you get access to exclusive content, our Discord, merch, and a ton of other perks. And with Commander Legends almost upon us, don't forget to head on over to GameGrid so you can get your singles and the product that you need from that. It really helps out the channel and they ship nationwide now. So that's really useful. And then we live stream every Tuesday at 7, so you can join us there for some Brawl on Arena. And don't forget to follow us on our social medias. It's Command Valley P1 and like us on Facebook. And links will be in the description below, as well as a link for the deck list. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.